no, 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 I'm not linking these two together, saying that there's going to be a trade one for one or anything like that. What I'm doing is comparing here. Because when it comes to Detroit Red Wings forward Philip Zadina, a young guy taken 6th overall in the 2018 NHL entry draft, there's a whole bunch of discourse surrounding him and the potential idea of a trade with Detroit. Now, this conversation isn't really something that I'm seeing a lot of Red Wings fans in particular saying should happen, but it is a conversation we're having because... Notable NHL media people have gone out there recently and highlighted the idea of a Zadina trade. In particular, we're talking about Frank Saravelli on the recent trade targets list on dailyfaceoff.com. Take a look at this article. It was published. When the heck was this published? Okay, there's no date on the actual article, but it's from sometime within the past 48 hours, I'm pretty sure. Saravelli says this Detroit's Philip Zadina joins the latest trade targets list. Now, before we go over the entire profile it has about Zadina and the trade, let's go over the profile of Zadina, the player first. 22 years old, 6 feet, 196. He is signed till the end of this season, making $894,000. It is indeed his entry-level deal. Now, as we noted, 6th overall, taken out of the 2018 NHL entry draft, he was taken out of the Halifax Moosehead system in the QMJHL. And I want you to keep that in mind here, because as we go forward, there are going to be a few things that we highlight about Zadina that sort of connect him in more ways than one to other players in the NHL. Zadina has never really rounded himself out in the ways that a lot of Red Wings fans would have wanted him to as a scorer. Sure, he has been developed a lot more on the perimeter, and his two-way game has been refined a ton since he made the NHL in 2018-19. This season, he's got 17 points in 52 games played, which is unfortunate because when you take a look at who are the top dogs on the Red Wings, you take a look at guys like Raymond, you take a look at guys like Larkin and Bertuzzi and Sider. They're all up there, not to mention Fabri and Nemestikov and Sutar and Gagne. These guys all have more points than Philip Zadina. And this is not really a good look for a guy who was taken sixth overall, a guy that a lot of people said should have gone third overall, and a player that in some people's minds back in December of 2017 thought that he could have gone second overall over Andrei Svechnikov too. The profile that Zadina displays today at 22 years old in the NHL is not the same as what people thought it would be at this point when he was drafted in 2018. And so you go over to Saravelli and what he has to say about Philip Zadina. Zadina is all of a sudden ranked here as the 12th most important trade target in the NHL. Contract pending RFA, 894k as the AAV, he was not ranked on the last daily faceoff list. There was no shortage of excitement around Zadina when the Red Wings selected him at 6th overall in the 2018 draft. GM Steve Eiserman didn't tip his hand, but the sense league-wide is a change of scenery is in order for Zadina. Teams perked up when Zadina spent six games in the top line from February 9th to 26, seeing it as a showcase opportunity ahead of a potential trade. He scored twice in those six games, putting him on track for 11 goals in 80 games. Zadina is a gifted shooter, but the knock on him is that he's become more of a perimeter player, and only a select few players like Ovechkin or Stamkos can consistently score in today's NHL from the outside. Zadina was also a healthy scratch on January 4th, and his ice time is down more than two and a half minutes from last season, which is a lot considering the recent bump on the first line is already factored into the equation. Now, I don't want to make it seem like the Red Wings and the way that they're developing Zadina is going to be constant throughout the rest of his career. Like, you want to talk about a change of scenery? I would not be surprised if by some time in the next two, three years, there's already somewhat of a change in the coaching staff. I don't really see Jeff Blashell sticking around for that long, right? So, if there is any sort of change in the way the Red Wings go out there and maybe deploy their players, or maybe once Jakob Vrana comes back, there's an entirely different change in deployment. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, but if you want to go over and say that Philip Zadina might need a change of scenery and that he might get traded, I wanted to talk about somebody else as well, because when I think about all this, there was a Reddit comment that kind of sums up everything perfectly. You see, this article was posted onto the Red Wings subreddit, and what they did on the sub was they kind of talked about it, because, you know, that's what subreddits do, and the top comment here on the Red Wings sub says this. Not exactly the same scenario, but... Iser God did flip Druan for Sergachev. 
And when I saw that, that kind of clicked in my head and I was like, oh, that, oddly enough, is exactly what I was thinking about, too, when I read this entire Zadina might get traded thing. Jonathan Druan is a Montreal Canadiens forward who is sort of in a similar position as Zadina is now. 2013 pick, third overall, he was drafted onto an Iser squad in Tampa Bay that was absolutely astounding. He spent three seasons in the Lightning organization playing for the team, but he was eventually traded to Montreal one for one for Mikhail Sergachev. Now, Druan was also taken out of the Halifax Moosehead system. He went third overall, whereas Philip Zadina was supposed to go third overall, but he didn't. Druan for the Lightning was not there right away. He spent another season in Halifax before coming over to the main Tampa Bay squad, and he kicked off his campaign with 32 points in 70 games at 19 years old. If you take a look at what Philip Zadina did at 19 years old, he went out there and spent the entire season split between Detroit and Grand Rapids, and he had 15 points in 28 games in the National Hockey League. Now, Druen differs a little bit because his third season in the NHL saw him put up 53 points, 20 goals in 73 games. That is a mark that he has not bested in any NHL season since, despite the fact that he spent so much time playing with the Montreal Canadiens up to this point. Now, a lot of people would go out there and say that the Druen for Sergachev trade was heavily skewed in Tampa's favor because, oh, they got Sergachev, who is a good puck-moving left-handed defenseman. But this is Iserman we're talking about here. What have you been saying the entire time about making trades with this guy? He finds ways to fleece you, and that's kind of what he did here in this entire Druan trade. Another idea that brought itself up in the comment section of the Reddit post on the R Detroit Red Wings sub is that, hey, it's Iserman going out there and making this trade. Sure, you might have your personal ideas and feelings about Zadina, you might feel that this guy's gonna be a lot better in the next few years, you might not want to give up on this guy. But, if there's anybody that you're going to go out there and want to trust in making a trade for Zadina, it's Steve Eiserman. You take a look at what this guy did when he traded away Druan, he got a very legit, puck-moving defenseman, and it was somebody that the Lightning needed to help them win two straight Stanley Cups. Now, for the Red Wings, I'm not going to go out there and say that Sergachev is going to be the return in particular, but... The Red Wings kind of do need the same. Left-handed defenseman, somebody to play with more at Sider because Danny DeKaiser just ain't cutting it. There is indeed a good track record when it comes to Steve Eiserman and the way that he trades these guys, especially guys that are young forwards out of Halifax, top draft picks who have not really showcased at the NHL level what it was their fan base has wanted to see. Now, Druan admittedly is a lot better than Philip Zadina was when Druan got traded compared to what Zadina is now, but... There still is a boatload of time to develop Zadina into a, you know, just more versatile scorer that's not afraid to cut in tight, not afraid to cut into dangerous areas more often, because as Sarah Valley noted, Zadina is a lot more of a perimeter player, a guy with a two-way edge that has been developed a lot more than people would have expected back in 2018. So there is indeed more to be desired, I think, when it comes to the way Zadina plays the game. But who knows if a change of scenery is going to occur within the Red Wings organization in the next few years, or if that change of scenery is going to come in the form of a trade. So if you are a Red Wings fan, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the idea of a Zadina trade. Would you trade Philip Zadina if the return is something akin to what Druan got the Lightning when Steve Eiserman traded him for Mikhail Sergachev? If that's sort of the idea that we're looking at here, Zadina for a young defender, that is super polished and becomes a top four caliber guy within the next few years, is that something you would say yes to? Or do you still want to go out there and give Zadina the benefit of the doubt? Okay, we haven't seen him in his final form yet. We haven't seen him playing with Verona for an extended amount of time. I want to see that going for a full 82 game season before we give up on this guy. Is your perspective on a Zadina trade a little bit different now that it's Iserman at the helm and no longer Ken Holland? Do you believe more in this GM staff that we have over here to make a trade like this? Or do you kind of just want to say, screw it, I want to stick with him long term see what he can do. I believe in this guy, and I want him to succeed here in Motown. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99, and bye. <laughs>